Hey investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey and today I'm going to talk about how I pick my stocks based on legendary greatest of all time investors Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger as well as value investors that have followed in their footsteps Phil Town and Danielle Town whose invested book and podcast I cannot recommend highly enough in order to learn how to best pick stocks based on these legendary investors and it's important to try to set goals and a promise to yourself that you will set out to achieve your financial dreams. So make sure you write that down as you're going into this and promise yourself that you're gonna stick with this process through the end and so that you can achieve your financial dreams. And it's important that even though we all want to make money in the stock market, that's why I think many of us go into it, you gotta know that there's always risk in investing and no one should tell you that investing is a sure thing. There's no such thing as a safe bet when it comes to investing. So just make sure you're fully aware of the kinds of risks that there could be with investing, but you do your best to get educated so that you can mitigate those risks and make the best possible educated guess when it comes to what you're investing in because none of us really know and if we did know then we'd be the executive management of a company and then maybe that could be insider trading and that wouldn't be a good thing so stay away from running into that situation if you come across it but for the most part i'm going to talk about how we can pick stocks in a very tried and true kind of way that i think will be very helpful to you because it's been tremendously helpful to me as well as I work hard putting together this kind of content I'd love if you could please like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because I'm here to help you be the best investor you can be thanks when we invest our hope and expectation is that our investments will go up in value and in price over time but I found that it's better to not think of it as I need to make money but instead to think of it as how Warren Buffett puts it in rule number one never lose money and rule number two never forget rule number one so it's critically important that we try to change around how we think about our approach to investing in stocks and that i know we all want to make as much money as possible but that kind of pressure we might put on ourselves doesn't necessarily help us so it's more important to try to protect our principal when we're investing so that we never lose our money hopefully and then also it's important to try to follow as closely as we can these simple four principles that Charlie Munger has outlined and Phil Town has conveniently summarized them and called them the four M's and they are as follows that businesses must have meaning to us and that we're capable of understanding the business and two, they need to have a moat, which is the business's intrinsic characteristics that give it a durable competitive advantage. And number three, that it has a management with integrity and talent. And number four, that it has a margin of safety or that we can buy it at a price that makes sense and gives that valuation that is cheaper than what it's currently selling for in the market or had been selling for. And then we can buy a stock effectively on sale, ideally at 50% off or more. So make sure you keep these four principles of Charlie Munger in mind as you're going through this process I'm about to take you through. Before you buy a stock, I wrote out the steps to help prepare you for how to invest. And even though I'm not good at snapping my fingers, I'm going to snap it and my steps will appear right here. And with these steps, the first thing we got to do is identify companies and industries we might be interested in. And you can pause it right here if you want to read the rest of the list, but I'll talk you through it. And if you recall from Charlie Munger's first principle, a company has to have meaning to us. So I'm going to talk you through one company that has meaning to me that I've invested in for years, and it's Starbucks because I worked there as a teenager and in my early 20s for about five years total. So I know Starbucks really well. And Starbucks is really popular, as you can tell. A lot of cars are in its drive through so a lot of people still like Starbucks, no matter how many controversies there are about millennials spending all their money on just Starbucks coffee and food. But in any event, you can learn about companies that you might be interested in by visiting screeners, like going to Yahoo Finance's screeners and plugging in, say, consumer cyclicals and then restaurants. And then we can see here that there are McDonald's, Starbucks, Chipotle, and Yum! brands that we might want to check out as to companies that we might be interested in buying if we like food. And I definitely love food. So even though I'm not much of a restaurant goer, I still like learning about companies that specialize in food and coffee and so on. So it's helpful to me 
need to look through what different options there are for companies that I might be interested in investing in. And you could export some of this information like copy and paste from Yahoo Finance's screener and put it in a spreadsheet so you can look at by market cap, which are the top companies in the restaurant business, as well as you could also organize it by the highest price to earnings ratio and see which companies could be a little bit expensive based on a price to earnings ratio when the historical average should have been around 15 or 16 and some of them like Chipotle are around 90 PE, which is a little too high for my taste. So I'd rather just make my own burritos at home and not overspend on Chipotle right now. Another thing you can do to try to figure out which companies and industries you might like to invest in would be to do what the towns came up with, which is a my three circles exercise. And I'll talk you through some of the questions that are involved in this three way Venn diagram. So you can see what there's in common that you might like to invest in. And in one example for myself, I'm asking myself, what do I vote for with my money? And that is probably Starbucks coffee because I buy it at Costco. And then where do I make my money? Well, I used to make money at Starbucks, so that's where I also get Starbucks as one of my three circles. And then about what am I passionate? I'm pretty passionate about coffee. Like I have coffee every morning and it helps me stay awake all day. So these are my three circles and you can do your own so that you can figure out which companies you'd like to invest in. Step number two is to start building a wish list of companies that you might like to learn more about or potentially buy. And here's an example of one of my wish lists of the top companies that I'm interested in either buying or I might already own these. And there are some more, but these are some of my favorite ideas right now. And hopefully I'll have a chance to be able to buy these companies, but it's important to have this wish list ready on hand so that when these companies go on sale, you can buy their stocks right away as long as you've done your homework. Number three, start familiarizing yourself with a company's fundamentals or its financial info that you can find on places like Guru Focus or also Yahoo Finance. And by looking at some of these factors, we can see which financial indicators might be useful as we're building our investment case for any particular company. Number four, you want to look at and read companies annual reports that are called 10K or also their quarterly reports called 10Q as well as check out guru investors you might admire their 13F filings with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and you can find these by visiting the investor relations page of the company's website and I like going there because they conveniently have most of the annual reports usually at least for the last five to ten if not 15 or 20 years so that's a great source to try to find annual reports so you have the raw data so you can do your own calculations as well as keep tabs on how companies are performing quarter to quarter although my favorite is to not have to keep up with some of these quarterly activities and just try to invest for the long term like at least 10 years and then to me it's helpful to know what gurus are investing in because it can reassure me if people that I admire and respect are also investing in the same stock like Bill Ackman used to invest in Starbucks but now he doesn't so sadly no one is currently invested in Starbucks among the gurus that I follow but that's something that can give you a clue if you're on the right track of which companies you'd like to invest in. Number five, choose and read a business newspaper such as the Wall Street Journal that every now and then I actually visit my local library to read up on the Wall Street Journal in full. But sometimes I just check the articles online and even though they're surrounded by paywalls, sometimes I pay for business newspapers and sometimes I don't. But this can help you keep tabs on your companies that you're interested in investing in. Number six, you want to finish completely answering Charlie Munger's four principles for yourself. And this includes the moat and management. So for a company's moat, remember that this is the competitive advantage of a company that helps it last for a long time. Like if we think of Starbucks, they tend to have a pretty good brand moat and a lot of people recognize it worldwide, even without having to associate the name. You see that green siren and you immediately know that it's Starbucks as well as it has a little bit of a switching moat in that 
people who are addicted to Starbucks coffee don't usually switch to something else. I mean, sometimes they do and they go for Dunkin' Donuts, but usually they stick with Starbucks. And then there's a little bit of network effects going for Starbucks where they have this gold star reward program and a lot of people can easily rack up a lot of gold stars so that they can redeem more coffee or food. And then also, it doesn't seem like Starbucks has much of a toll bridge or price or secrets moat. So it's important to know what types of moat apply to Starbucks's business, as well as when it comes to management, we want to make sure they have integrity. And for years, there was legendary CEO and chairman Howard Schultz who ran the show, and now he's not there anymore. And since 2017, Kevin Johnson has been at the helm. So it's important to try to figure out if this guy has integrity and if he's being truthful and if he's running the company in a good way. And we can see that through objective measures with calculating certain figures like return on invested capital to see if he's doing a good job or if he's racking up a lot of debt for the company, as well as we can take a look at his insider trading activity. And within the last couple of years between 2020 and 2021, he's done a lot of selling at the end of July 2021. So that's kind of a warning sign to me is to try to figure out if he's selling above normal amounts that he should be considering he's an executive at the company or if this is part of his normal salary package and it's totally understandable if he's selling what he's currently selling but the more that an insider tends to sell the stock that could be a warning that he may not be as fully committed to the company because if he wants the company to grow for the long term and technically they're kind of incentivized to make the price go up you would think that it's a little bit odd for them to be selling the stock. They should be as invested as possible if they want to make the value of their stock just keep going up. So these are important factors to keep in mind and make sure you complete as well. Number seven is Charlie Munger's fourth principle of where you want to buy a wonderful company at a price that makes sense and gives a margin of safety. And this means that you have to calculate what you think will be the intrinsic value of a company in the future. And then you want to buy it on sale or at a margin of safety price because you're trying to give yourself enough margin in case you're a little bit wrong about the future and it may or may not fully live up to the intrinsic value that you've calculated but you're buying it at such a discount to what you believe will be its full value in the future that you can't help but likely do okay in the end. So when you're focusing on trying to calculate these margin of safety valuation numbers, you're looking back at the company's financial statements and these include its cash flow statement, income statement, and balance sheets, all which you can find on the company's 10K. And there's plenty of tools online that also collect this information. So you can quickly breeze through these numbers and be able to gather the data so that you can calculate these valuation metrics. And then in addition, I've also gathered from each of the 10Ks over the last 15 years from Starbucks here and pulled out financial indicators that are useful to me in trying to evaluate if Starbucks might be a good business to maybe invest in the future. And they include things like net income, which is also known as its net earnings or also total assets and total liabilities, figuring out the company's equity, dividends and book value, and how much it's able to have a return on assets, a return on equity, and a very important factor, return on invested capital. And these are important because they give me insight into the company's growth rates and some of these important factors so I can ascertain how likely this company is to grow at certain growth rates in the future, and that can help inform how I value the business. Number eight, if a company's stock is on sale, we can buy and hold forever, ideally, and we can say banzai or hurrah and be happy with ourselves because we found a wonderful company and bought it at a price that made sense. So we can rest assured that we've done everything we can to know what we've invested in. And to summarize the four M's in the research that I've done about Starbucks for this video, I give you the four M's that Starbucks has for me, and they include factors like knowing that Starbucks's current price is at around $119 a share. And its meaning is that, yes, coffee, that's what it's all about. And I worked there for five years of my life, so I understand Starbucks's culture and how they operate as the third place, which is the third place that a lot of people like to go, aside from home and workplace. 
and they have a diverse menu and 32,646 stores worldwide, which is really impressive. That's above and beyond a lot of other competitor coffee chains. And for two, their moat, I talked about this earlier, but I think that they mostly have a brand switching and slightly network effects moats, but not really toll bridge because you totally can get other coffee than Starbucks. It's obviously not all that there is to coffee. And then there's no secrets because it's easy to make coffee and they don't have a price moat because I think that it's kind of expensive for a lot of people and you can get way cheaper coffee somewhere else. So even though I know Starbucks could keep raising their prices, I don't think that they have the best price mode. And then three with management, I talked about Howard Schultz and now there's Kevin Johnson, but with some of the management objective numbers here, their return on invested capital has been below 10% since fiscal year 2018, which is not a good sign because we wanna see it at least 10%. But in general, on average for the last 15 years, their ROIC has been at 16%, so that's not bad still. And then their long-term debt from the 2020 annual report 10K was at 15,910. And remember, that's in millions of dollars. And then it's free cash flow I calculated, including a massive amount of CapEx, ended up being at 7,840. So right now the debt ratio is two to one, but we ideally want to see the debt be at less than three times what free cash flow would be. So you want to be able to have enough cash flow to be able to pay off the debt within three years. And then their current assets to current liabilities, you want to see that be at a two to one ratio of more assets to liabilities. But unfortunately, the ratio is at 0.79 assets to one liability. So that's kind of not a good sign either as far as management is concerned. And then for number four, margin of safety, I projected based on quickly glancing at Guru Focus's growth numbers, it didn't look super awesome for the foreseeable future. And in the last five years, it's been a little bit dicey. So I gave Starbucks a 3% windage growth rate and a windage PE of 30. And right now the current PE is at 49.8 or almost 50, which is kind of high for Starbucks. And then I gave it a margin of safety price based on my calculations of $36.26, a payback time buy price of $67.55, and a 10 cap or owner earnings price of $75.37. So with all of these numbers, this is how I valued Starbucks. And if you wanna learn how to value Starbucks in some of these same calculations, I highly recommend getting the invested book or checking out rule number one because you can find out a lot about how to calculate these numbers so that you know how much you should pay for Starbucks. So with these numbers, I know immediately that Starbucks is not on sale right now. So unfortunately, I gotta wait until Starbucks might be on sale someday again for me to buy it. If you're still with me, congrats, because you made it through my eight step process for how to pick stocks so that you can buy your own stocks using this amazing methodology. And as a reward, I wanna also point you to more free resources I offer you, which include visiting my website, michellemarkey.com forward slash resources, so you can learn how to take control of your finances and start investing like Warren Buffett, as well as if you're interested in learning more about the invested book principles, I cover each of the book's chapters one by one, and I go through some of the key principles in more detail from Charlie Munger, and they include my value investing principles video and my Jedi investing video, which is more on Charlie Munger's moat and management things to consider. And also, if you love learning about coffee things and enjoy the economics of coffee so you can try to figure out how much your cup of coffee costs you, I'd suggest you check out my video where I evaluate if Graham Stephan's bankroll coffee really can cost 20 cents per cup. And you can see what the verdict will be if you check out that video. And if you enjoyed this video or learned something, please like and subscribe. And I wish you well on your journey to becoming the best investor you can be. Till next time.